Hi, I'm Andrew. And I'm Sam. And we're Envy Board Gaming. And today we're going to take a look at Red Rising by Jamie Segmeyer and Alexander Schmidt, published by Stonemeyer Games. This is a one to six player game that plays in about 45 minutes to an hour, um, based on the Red Rising book series. So let's take a look at how it's played and we'll come back and give you guys our final thoughts. All right, so as you can see, I have already set up a two-player game of Red Rising. Now, in a two-player game, you will have three cubes of an unused color as a neutral player on the Institute. Also, each player is going to be representing one of the houses or factions, and they will each have their own special ability when it comes to receiving the Sovereign Token. So in this example, I'm going to be representing Jupiter. Each player will also receive a starting hand of five cards. And what you're going to be doing is you are going to be going back and forth, taking one of two actions. You can either lead or you can scout. Now, if you lead, what you're going to be doing is you're going to be playing one of the cards from your hand onto one of the four locations. So let's say, for example, I use Bone Riders here. When I play this card, it does not matter which location I play to, I will only be doing the deploy action. Okay, so if I play to Jupiter, I'll only be doing the deploy action. If I play to Mars, I'm only doing the deploy action. So I'm going to play a card. And then I will do the deploy action. Now for Bone Riders, the deploy action is to receive the Sovereign Token. Meaning that then I would trigger my faction ability here, which allows me to move up one on the fleet track. Okay? Then, as the second half of my lead action, I will then be picking up a card. Either from one of the three locations that I did not place to, or from the top of the deck. So if I picked up from the Institute, I would then place one of my cubes onto the Institute. If I chose to pick up from Luna, I would then gain the Sovereign Token. Even if I have already, if I already have this, I will then again activate my house or faction's ability. If I pick up from Mars, I will gain a Helium. And if I pick up from Jupiter, again, if I played to Jupiter, I can't pick it up. But in future turns, if I were to ever pick up a card from Jupiter, I would then move up again on the fleet track. Okay? Now, if I don't want to pick up any of the cards from the three locations that I did not play to, I can pick the top card from the deck. What I would do is I'd pick it up, add it to my hand, and then I would roll the rising dice. And whatever the result is, is the reward that I would gain. So in this case, I would gain one helium. So that would be the lead action. The scout action that you can do, if you don't want to play any cards, what you can do is you can reveal the top card of the deck, and you will then play it to any one of the four locations. When you do that, you will then gain that location's bonus. So if I played it to Mars, I would gain a helium. Okay. Players will then take turns going back and forth doing these actions until one of two things happen. Either all three of the following conditions are met. Someone would have to be either someone would have to be at seven on the fleet track, seven or more cubes on the Institute, or if they have seven or more helium. Okay, that will trigger the end of the game. Or if one player meets two of the three of those criteria. So if I, for instance, had eight on the fleet and seven helium, then I would again trigger the end of the game. You would go until everybody has the same equal number of turns. Um, or if someone's Apollo, they will get an extra turn at the end of the game. And what you're going to do is then score for the cards that you have in your hand. Um, also, there will be end of the game abilities. Uh, so I know orange has them. I think actually a lot of the different colors, I think the rule book's a little bit unclear um, where it might say only orange and, you know, gray have it, but there are different colors that have um, end game abilities. It just depends on the rule book you have. So make sure you do realize that more than two colors have these end of the game uh, abilities. Then you're going to be scoring points. You're going to score points for the base value of each and every single card. 
as well as bonus points if you meet the criteria at the bottom. And some may even cost you to lose points. Now, the hand limit in this game is seven, but you can go higher than seven. However, for every card over that hand limit, you will get a negative 10 points. Now you'll still be able to score that card, but you'll still get that penalty of 10 points. Also, you are gonna get points based on where you are at on the fleet track, based on how many cubes you have on the Institute, and you will get victory points for your Helium. At the end of the game, whoever has the most points is gonna be the winner. Uh, oh, and you'll get points for the Sovereign Token as well. And whoever has the most points is gonna win. And that is how you play Red Rising. All right, so that is how you play Red Rising. So let's first jump into the positives. Mm -hmm. What what did you like about this game? What's positive about it? I liked the <clears throat> whole, first off that it's colorful. Um, <laughs> I like the, you know, like pretty um, games, but I thought the, the theme was cool. Okay. Just um, very futuristic, um, you know, type game. Very interesting. I don't mm -hmm. know. I feel like it's different than anything I've ever played. Yeah, we we haven't read the books. Just as a as a uh, you know, kind of like disclaimer, we have we have not read any of the books. At least I haven't. You haven't read any no, I haven't. Um, I think for me too, what I liked was I liked being able to build off of certain cards and you know certain cards are going to get you victory points at the end and you're kind of you're building your um like engine but it's i feel like there was a lot of your variety hand. yeah your hand right yeah. so a lot of different well each card i mean like so like obviously the blue ones had a lot to do with the fleet track and i like mm -hmm. that the orange ones could change the the names or yeah. you know I, I liked that, ooh, what card do I want to keep? What cards do I want to get rid of? You know, and being able to figure out the right position that you want to play a card because maybe you want to cover something up that you don't want somebody else to have. Mm -hmm. um, and then also being like, ooh, which track do I want to move up? You know, do I focus on the fleet track? Do I focus on the Institute? You know, do I focus on Helium? Like, yeah. I like that you get points from almost essentially everywhere because you get yeah. points from even getting the the sovereign token you know you, mm -hmm. you get points from from every single little space that you go and right. it's it's kind of like i feel like you know i i say this maybe in a lot of different reviews but i feel like it's a it's a race you know you're trying to get to seven or higher on each of those mm -hmm. essentially tracks you know the fleet track or having seven or more cubes or seven or more helium and so mm -hmm. i like that turn angst of oh you know i want to play what card do i want to play to get the deploy action because some might have really good ones and you know what card do i want to pick up or what track do i want to move up and you have to make those decisions so there's some some good meaty decisions there uh and trying to have that best combination of cards but then also you know, if you don't have a great hand of cards, you don't want to rush to the end because you might not have a good set of cards in your hand yeah. that are going to benefit you. They don't play off of each other, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, and so there is that whole, I want to do well, I don't, but I don't want to end the game too quickly. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, I really like, I really like the, the it's a very colorful game. Um, the artwork. I mean, not just because, like, oh, obviously it's it's rainbow and it's pretty, but I think the mm. the artwork was really good. Right, right. The rainbow, the art, rainbow. The artwork <laughs> was really pretty. Um, yeah. So I think, yeah, those cover the positives. Let, mm -hmm. Now let's jump into the negatives. You want to go first, or you want me to? Um, I'll go first. Okay. So I think kind of what you said about your hand might not play off of each other. That I feel like can be a negative, and so then you're kind of aspect. yeah, and then you're kind of stuck with it, you know. Like I mean, well, I mean you can play them and get rid of them, but right. But if you don't want to play them, you know, then you're kind of you kind well, of just you, have if them you don't like hand. them, you would want to play them. Then. Right, but I think too, you know, based out off of like what's out there, 
So, you know, you'll have like cards to choose from that you can draw, but like if you want one that's, you know, underneath, you know, you have to take um, the random, you have to take the one on top. You can't take the, like, if right. you see a card on bottom that you want, you're like, well, you know, you have to wait and then if someone can put another card on top of it, so then you might not ever get it. Right. Unless you play a card that lets you move cards around or yeah. if they get banished um, and being able to finally get to a card. Yeah. If you could do that. Yeah. But I feel like that's difficult to do sometimes. Right. I've seen games where a lot of cards get banished. And then games where hardly any cards get banished. Mm -hmm. uh, it just kind of depends. Um, so, yeah, what else? Um, you know, honestly, I think those were the only negatives I had. Just the luck of the cards? And yeah. I, yeah, because okay. I had some games where I'm like, ooh, like these are awesome. They all play off of each other. Or I could maneuver it. But, I, right. yeah, so I think that, yeah, that'd be my only thing. I think mean, I have... I have quite a few negatives actually for the game. I think one, this is a game that's very prone for AP. I would, I do not yeah. want to play this game with six people. I just don't because I feel like it takes, you can't really plan anything ahead of time. So yeah. you can't really plan your turns ahead of time because the cards that are out there are drastically going to change from one play to the next. People are, could take forever with their turns and deciding do I want to scout or do I want to lead and then what cards do I play and you know what card do I pick up because they get very thinky about min maxing those points and so people get a lot of AP and if you're playing this with six just don't. I feel like it yeah uh, a lot so, of people it's not. Also I will say even though it, so in the game if you have a hand size lock so everybody starts with five unless you play the one faction you get an extra card. If you can have a hand limit up to seven anything over seven you get negative points but generally you're gonna probably net a positive because even if I get the eighth ninth tenth card mm -hmm. so long as those cards give me at least 11 points at least it's positive you know yeah. it's not going to hurt you that bad so long as you get those points but there have been games where cards have not come up that allow you to get more than five cards or if somebody attacks you and makes you discard a card or whatever you could go even lower and i will say if you do not get in my in my experience of playing this game you have to get more than five cards to at least be competitive. I mean, it's a pretty high scoring game, Yeah. but if say. you're not getting more than five cards in your hand, I just, I don't see how you're gonna be very, I don't see how you're gonna be very competitive in the end when it comes to scoring. I just don't. Yeah. Basically, because those cards in your, yes, I mean, you get points from the Fleet Track, the Institute, the Helium and all that stuff. But the cards in your hand are going to be where you get all your, mm -hmm. you get most of them, right? And so if you don't get more than five, I feel like there's almost no chance for you to win. I could be wrong. I'm sure if you get the perfect combination of five cards, you'd do great. But all in all, the chances mm -hmm. of that happening probably more slim than none. Yeah. So I don't, the luck plays a big fact, a big role into that. I feel like your strategy is going to be really limited just based on what you get. You get, you have to do the best with what you have. Mm -hmm. And so, with this, um, I will say we have the collector's edition of this. Uh, I pre-ordered it. I would not recommend getting the collector's. Don't. If you want it, go retail for a very, a lot of different reasons. One, the card holders in here, I, I don't know. They oh, just yeah. fall over all the time. It doesn't work. Also, if you have more cards than five, I mean, it's not like you're going to be able to put them all in there and see everything you need anyway. I, I just keep them in my hand. Right. Like, it got to the point where I was like... I oh, almost that. never will use them anymore. I'll yeah. never use them anymore because they're going to fall over half the time. The other half, it's like you don't even really have enough space. Uh, another thing is the cube. Yes, everything's metal, right? You have the metal cubes. You have the metal, like... Uh, starter, the uh, the sovereign token, all that stuff. But some of the colors are so close, it's hard to even tell. You have the pink and purple that are so close. I mean, you have the the gold and the I don't know brass or bronze, whatever. They're so close in color, it's almost hard to even tell. Even if you're not colorblind, mm -hmm. um, the insert. Oh my gosh, I hate the insert in this game. 
I like to store my games vertically if I can. You can't do that. You cannot store this game vertically because what happens, all those cubes, everything falls out, and then I got to figure out what colors or what to put back in the little bowls. Horrible, 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 horrible insert. And oh, I hate it. I hate it. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Other than that, like, I mean, it's nice production, but... It's almost, I would rather just to have the retail version of the game because it's just going to be easier for me. Mm -hmm. You know, I'd almost rather just throw all the little pieces in baggies, throw out the insert, and just have the box. Because at least then I can store it vertically. And I mean, the card holders, I mean, yes, it's very nice to have card holders, but not they keep falling over. They can't hold yeah, your hand. Yeah, actually, I forgot about that until you said something. And because I, don't, I never use it now like i used it maybe like the first two times we played and i was like okay right. like it, it just keeps falling over and then they fall over and ev people can see your hand right. too because they're just falling over right in front of them right. so i mean really there's no point in having right and so I, i'll make this short i'll jump right into the review i don't want to talk about this too and this is this gets a six it's okay it's okay for me it's not a game that i'm super excited to pull out all the time Especially, I mean, I'll play it at two, maybe yeah. three. I don't really like to play it with uh, six or five. You know, I, I'll go up to four. Mm -hmm. But other than that, this, yeah. I mean, even two has, you're not going to see as many cards. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, yes, you get to see more cards with more people, but you're also waiting forever for your turn, at least in my experience. And two player, you don't see as many cards and, yeah, I, it's it's okay. This is a solid six. It's okay. It's not. It's one that you know, I probably won't hold on to for super super long. But it's okay. If you're into the books, you'll probably like it. You might like it. Mm -hmm. I didn't connect with it as much, so it's okay. What do you think? Um, I give it a little bit better than you, like a six point five. Okay, six point yeah. five. I mean, I thought it was. I thought it was a good game. Like, uh. I mean, you you obviously like dealt with the insert stuff and have more like negative negative things to say based right. on the like production part of it, you right. know. And that's that's a lot of it, but it's a card yeah. game. I mean, you're gonna have to look. It, that's not that big of a deal. I think I'm I'm more just frustrated with the insert and the production. Yeah. But the game was okay. You know, it's okay. Right. I mean, like I said, if you don't get more than five cards, I don't think you're gonna be competitive. I just don't. Yeah. Maybe I'm wrong. But. Well, and I think the theme, the theme is cool, um, but it's not like a thematic type game. You know what right. I mean? Right, the like, theme is plastered on. It's just, yeah. I mean, maybe if I knew more about the books, mm -hmm. but I don't. So I don't really know like why these people don't want to be with this color or why, mm -hmm. who the, the gold people are. And I'm, I'm sure if I read the books, I'd be more into it. Yeah. Um, but, we know more about it. Right. I think that would probably be my complaint too. Is like the it's it's not it doesn't feel thematic to me. Right. It just feels like you're so, you're looking for certain colors and yeah. I feel like it could be more thematic. So that would probably only be my negative. I feel like there could be a way to make it more thematic. I don't know how, yeah. but I mean, yeah, that'd probably be my only thing. Yeah, it's a card game. I mean, it's what it is. Mm -hmm. so. But yeah. Yeah. Anything else? No, that's it. All right. So that is our thoughts on Red Rising. Um, feel free to click like, comment, subscribe, click that little bell icon so you get notifications every time we post a video. And let us know what you think about Red Rising. You know, maybe you've read the books and it makes a lot of sense to you. Please yeah. let us know. I'd love to hear about <laughs> Explain it. Explain it. Right, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, thank you guys for watching and we'll see you guys on the next one.